Since the Apple Silicone laptops have come out and have proven to be pretty decent, I've seen these Intel-based MacBooks continue to go down in price. So I'm going to tell you in this video what to look for if you're looking for a second-hand or a used uh, MacBook Pro from, let's say, 2017 in this case. So check out this video. I've got lots of tips for you. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery. And today we're going to be taking a look at this. This is a 15-inch 2017 MacBook Pro. And like I said, because the M1 and M2 laptops have come out, it's now 2023, and those things have been out for a couple years. And people like them. They're, they're awesome devices. But uh, we've still got a lot of life left in these style laptops. And I found this 2017 15-inch. I'm going to show you what to look for if you find one of these used and uh, and some of the difference between some of the models. Now, I use a similar one of these every day, a 2016 I've got at work, and I use it for photo editing, video editing. I've got a hundred tabs open in browsers, and the thing just never flinches. And this one here is a 2017, a little bit newer, a little bit faster, a uh, little bit better features. So we're gonna be taking a look at this 2017 and let me show you things to look for if you find one of these. So the first thing I'm going to point out is that not every single one of these is the same. If you find a 2017 15-inch MacBook Pro, that just means that's what the model is. There's several models within that model line. Now I'm going to be using my trusty Mac Tracker app that I've showed you guys on the channel before. And here's the MacBook Pro 15-inch 2017. And we can see that the, the base model here is a 2.8 gigahertz, and then they had a 2.9 gigahertz. That's the different options that they had here. Now this is what I call like the Best Buy models, because if you go to Best Buy, they're probably gonna have on display whatever the base model is. They may have an option for an upgrade, um, but they don't have you know customization like if you buy it direct from Apple. Now if we scroll down, we can see what the original prices were, like 23, 24, $2,800 for these things. So these were, absolute beasts when they came out and they were you know priced accordingly so if we scroll down we can see that those i7 processors a seventh series you know seventh generation processors we've got the 7700 7820 and then it lists the 7920 so down here it says the processor speed at 2.8 2.9 or 3.1 so up here before where they have the pricing and stuff that's just based on those base models that like i said you could just buy right from the store but you can actually order an upgrade model, the 3.1 gigahertz. So that's going to give you a little bit more speed. You can see the different processor speeds here, what they boost up to. And then you can see some benchmarks here between them. Now the benchmarks aren't like huge differences between them all, but every little bit helps, especially with a, with a device of this age. Now as we keep scrolling down and looking at the options, it looks like there was options for 256, 512, one terabyte, two terabyte, all SSD, um, so had a couple different options there, and we all know how these prices change. Like if this was the the base model was what we say twenty four hundred dollars. If you just jump up from the two fifty six to the five twelve, that was probably a two hundred dollar jump when it was launched. So that's going to make a big difference what's inside there. And then we scroll down. If we look at the memory, now this is all memory that's like soldered in there you're not going to be able to change any of this but they all came with like 16 gigs so that's going to be that's going to be decent enough so and the display is a 15.4 inch really nice retina display 2880 by 1800 pixels 220 pixels per inch and now here comes a couple different options also when it comes to the graphics card you got the built-in graphics the built-in intel 630 and then they had a second adapter in there for you know, more graphic needed stuff. So any of the, you know, gaming, if you're going to be doing, doing any gaming, which most people probably don't, but any type of graphics heavy, you know, requirements, they had options of a two gigabyte uh, Radeon Pro 555 and a four gigabyte Radeon Pro 560. So these were upgrades also that would determine the final price if you were customizing this. So when we take a look at all these different options here, we know that the base model that was $2,400 is all augmented by all those different upgrades. So 
if you find one of these and you're trying to give a value to yourself, make sure you're looking at all the different options to see, was this just the absolute bare bones one or was this one upgraded? So if we look at this one here, go up to the about this Mac screen, then we can see, let me zoom in a little bit on that. This is a 3.1 gigahertz core i7. So this is the actual top of the line one. And of course it's got this 16 gigs of memory and let's go ahead and go to, to more info. And we can see 16 gigs of memory. It's got a one terabyte SSD. And then if we go into the system report here, let me pull this down into the screen. We can look under graphic displays and we've got the built-in 630 and then we've got the 560 so this is upgraded 4 gigabyte so not only is it the top of the line processor it's got the 16 gigs of RAM it's got a 1 terabyte hard drive instead of 256 gigabytes or 512 gigabytes and it's got the 4 gig Intel or 4 gig Radeon Pro 560 so this is not your $2400 this was probably when it was initially built and priced is probably in the $31, $3,200 range. So even if those prices that we were just talking about don't mean anything in today's prices, because obviously you can go down and get a, an M1 or an M1 Pro or an M2 for cheaper than that, you got to still remember that this is a 15-inch MacBook Pro. And if you try to go find a brand new 15-inch MacBook Pro, it's going to be in that price range. It's going to be $2,500 and up um, because it's starting with an M1 Pro probably. And that's just what you're going to pay for these things. So instead of thinking this is a you know three thousand dollar laptop and that's what it's worth, well that's you know a five six year old valuation of obviously. So instead of thinking that way, what I try to think of is, well if if the very cheapest one of these was let's say twenty four hundred, and this one might have been like thirty two hundred, whatever that price difference is, it doesn't mean that today it's worth you know, $800 more. But if this whole thing is worth, let's say, 25% of what it was, you know, the used price of this may be 25% of what it was when it came out. Well, then that $800 price difference between the intro model and the souped up model may also be 25% difference, which is still $100, $200. So if you find one of these things, it's worth looking at all the specs to see it, it may be worth, you know, $100 or $200 more than the intro model. Now, maybe you know that, and maybe the seller doesn't. Maybe this is, you find this at a pawn shop, and they're just looking at, you know, one single thing. It's, hey, this is a 2017 MacBook Pro, and that's what they base their price on. But you want to be educated and know what the options are to know what it's really worth to you. Now, the next thing I'd like to think about when I'm, I'm putting a value on a, a used device like this is how the price differences shrink. We talked about how this is only worth a fraction of what it was when it came out. And as those prices shrink in value, so does the price difference between models. So if we look at this 15 inch 2017, and if we look at a 13 inch 2017, I bet you the price difference between those two when they first came out was let's say a thousand dollars difference. Well, if you found both of these used locally, I bet you the price difference between them is about $100. So at that point, you got to think, do I want the bigger laptop for just a tiny bit more money? Or I'm not, if I'm really looking for just portability, then maybe that 13-inch is the right one. But absolute bang for the buck, you know, performance-wise, the 15-inch is definitely going to be a much nicer device than that 13-inch because of the better graphics, probably the higher amount of RAM, nicer screen, obviously. So think about that when you're looking and comparing and shopping around for different devices to see if you can get the best bang for your buck. All right, so now that you found your device and you think that you've assigned a price to yourself, hey, it's worth this much to me, and uh, and that way you can determine if it's a good good deal or not, the next thing you need to do is to make sure that the thing actually functions the way it's supposed to. And for this particular device, the first thing I want you to look at is the keyboard. So these had the butterfly keys, which everybody knows had some problems and all it takes is a little bit of dust getting underneath one of these keys for it to to misfire and I've got one like I said the one I've got at work 
the B key on it. Sometimes I hit the B key and nothing happens. Sometimes I hit it and it gives me two Bs. So it's just something I've just learned to deal with and, and know that if I'm typing a password in, don't put any Bs in it. <laughs> That's that, that would be a pain in the butt. But uh, what I'd like for you to do is do something like just open up Spotlight, type in Notes, you know, launch a Notes window. And just go in here and type every one like three times. Just go through the whole alphabet and watch the, the letters as you're typing them to make sure that they're not double tapping, make sure that they're not misfiring, and just make sure that they work good. Go through the entire keyboard and make sure everything works the way it should be because it only takes one key to be wrong or to be bad for it to be a real pain. So the Apple did originally repair all these keyboards for free, but I think we're getting to the timeline where it had to be manufactured before I think 2000 or after 2017 and we're getting to the point that some of these probably weren't manufactured after 2017. They may have been manufactured late 2016. So don't rely on that, but you can actually go to their website. You can type in your serial number and it'll tell you straight up if it has a free you know, fix for the, for the keyboard or not. But if you want to save yourself all that problem, go ahead and just test it out first before you do anything. Now, after you do test it all out and make sure that everything works, they do sell little skins on Amazon. They're like 12 bucks and it's a keyboard cover. They've been making them for years, but they make one that's real skinny that goes over and it'll basically protect anything from getting down in between. There are some, uh, cases where you know you could spill liquid on there that's obviously real bad but even just small dust particles can get underneath there and you know mess up these butterfly keys all right the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how to find out what kind of battery life this thing may have left on it so if we still have the screen open here which we found by going to more info and then at the bottom of system report and this is of course if you're using ventura if you're using an older operating system, then the system report shows up right on this screen. But once you get into the system report, if you go to power, you can see some information about the battery right here. So let's zoom into that real quick. And one thing I want you to look at is this cycle count. So the cycle count basically means how many times the battery has been discharged and fully charged again. So this is saying about 300 times. Now these batteries that are built into these particular models are rated for a thousand cycles. So this one being, you know, five, six years old and, and still having one third of its life left in it, or one third, only using up one third of this, the rated cycles, I'm pretty happy with that. And what you can usually do when you're looking at these is kind of figure out how this thing was used. Was it always left on a desk? Was it taken on the, on the road and always used out of a backpack? or some combination. And I would say in this case, it's probably used a, a combination of the two. If it was used full time, you know, off the charger, the cycle count would be a lot higher than this. If it was used on the desk, it'd probably be a lot lower. So this was probably used a combination of the two. So at that point, um, I'm pretty confident that this battery still got some life in it. All right, so now we've looked at the specs, we figured out how much it's worth to us. We've verified that it wasn't abused um, the battery's still good on it, then obviously you need to do a physical inspection of it. Look at the screen, look at the glass, look at the case, make sure there's no big dents or anything, make sure it hasn't been dropped. Um, the good thing about these aluminum MacBooks is you can tell if something's been dropped. <laughs> there's no hiding that. There's the, the metal is soft enough that it's going to show a dent somewhere. And of course I looked this one over and it's in pretty darn good condition. So I'm happy with this purchase that I found. And that's why I wanted to show you guys kind of, hey, that there's some workhorses out there. This thing is, is still a beast today, even though it is five, six years old. There's still some workhorses out there that, you know, these people that owned this top of the line device, they probably went out and they just bought an M2 or an M1. So they just went out and, and replaced this. And now they've got a new one. And now you can have a new one also. So I just wanted to give you a couple things to look at on these know the differences between the different models, know what those differences mean, both uh, you know spec-wise and money-wise. All right, so if you've made it this far in the video, 
this is where we want to have some fun. So down in the comments below, I want you to type in a price of what you think this was worth uh, buying for today in 2023, early 2023. What would, what would be a good deal that if you found this laptop for sale, what price would be a no-brainer that you would say, yep, I'd buy it for that. So put that price down there. We'll kind of see what everybody's head's at. And then that way, maybe I'll see if I got a good deal or not. So that is going to wrap it up for this quick episode. If you have any questions about this particular model, go ahead and write them down there in the comments below. Also, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, like I said, I've got a 2016, which is very similar to this one. And this one is going to be a great addition to my collection that I'll be able to keep here at home and do some video editing with also. So I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, I'd appreciate that thumbs up. If you like this type of content and want to see more, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button also. Thank you as always for watching, and until next time, peace out and geek out.